See these pornographic Steins Gate doujinshi? I'm making this video as my excuse for buying all of them. And by all of them, I also mean all of these. And also these. I may have a problem. Welcome back to my series analyzing literally every single episode of Steins Gate, by the way. I've been rattling my brain trying to figure out what to say about episode 21 because all they really do is go to Comic Cat. But then I realized that's exactly what's so important about it. Steins Gate is about the beauty of the everyday, and episode 21 is about the characters coming to terms with the loss of it. Kurisu, literally, as she sits in the stairwell and ponders her own mortality. But also Miyuri and Okabe as they struggle to enjoy their time together at the biggest event of the year, with the ghost of time travel hanging over their heads. So, in the spirit of Kamiket, and instead of lining up for hours and hours just to buy a bunch of pornography because Jesus fucking Christ, dude, I thought we just skip right ahead and show you the doujinshis. And by that I mean we are still gonna be taking a look at some comic ed footage as well as something even more obscure and interesting which is the comic ed catalog. And no matter what you're imagining this thing to be, I need to brace you for what I'm about to show you because this thing is insane. Yeah, this thing is literally the size of a phone book. Here's something you might not have realized. Comic Cat is a goddamn nightmare. What, you thought you could just show up and browse through and pick up whatever has the hottest wife on the front? Hell no, Comic Cat is way too huge and busy for that. All the good ones will be sold out by the time you find anything worth reading. No, no. You need one of these. You'll notice what's helpfully included at the front is a detailed floor plan along with a notepad for everything you plan to buy because Comic Cat isn't so much a market as it is a competition. You open this up and you plan. You line up for like 10 hours before it opens to get a good place in line and then you make a mad dash for whatever table is selling the hottest Steinsgate doujins. Buy them and then the next and the next and then maybe you can take a sec to browse everything except no you can't that took six hours and now everything's gone and the place is closed idiot. Let me show you this news footage of one Gaijin's journey through Comic Ed. The first comic you wanted to buy sold out. Sad. The second, the artist took the day off. Double sad. But finally, at his third stop, he got a chance to buy some doujins. And... And that's, that's literally it. This isn't to say Comic Ed is boring per se, just that literally all it is is a place to buy the hottest indie comics. Hottest as in both. There's porn, you get it. Wonder why we didn't go to Comic Ed for this one? Yeah, this is why. Because the real Comic Ed experience isn't the hordes of sweaty weeaboos, but the fucking catalog itself. I think they stopped printing these and mostly went digital, so I got one I knew would have Steinsgate shit in it. So, here's what I don't get about this. It literally does not tell you how everything is organized. Oh sure, it has an index for every circle listed here. A circle in Japan is like a club or a collaborative group. But that doesn't tell you anything about what you're buying unless you already know whose comics you want. Like, what the hell does Gizzle or Sixbox write? I don't fucking know. Props to the guys that just named their circle the mm sound five times so as to not get lost in the sea of doujinshis though. That's a five head move if I've ever seen one. I mean, it is organized. Here's the Haruhi section. Here's Steins Gate. Here's the other Steins Gate section. I'm assuming the difference is that one of these is pornography, but I'm not actually sure. Here's the train section. What, are you surprised that there's two literal pages of train zines at comic? Cat and six pages of fate doujins? I'm not. What maybe should surprise you though is that this is just one of three days. I cannot overstate just how huge an event this is. Look at all these weeaboos. Now look at this. This is like two hours after the event opened and there's still a never-ending lineup. If you're a comic a virgin, do not go on day one. Just do not. So presumably, you'd look for your favorite Steinsgate doujin author, and then the tables around it would also be Steinsgate doujins. What if you're looking for something super obscure that only one person might be writing about? Honestly, I have no idea. You're fucked, maybe. I mean, there seems to be some kind of general organization, comics, novels, games, cosplay, porn, trains again. I just think that's hilarious. So presumably, there's some way to search for it, but either I'm a massive idiot, or it actually just does not tell you how it's organized. And now it's time to show you my favorite doujinshis, by which I mean, I obviously cannot show you my favorite doujinshis. So instead, we're gonna be taking a look at the most obscure doujin I own, which is a collection of mini games based on each character called Stein's Game. And by collection, I mean uh, apparently 
both of the discs I managed to find were actually demos with only a couple of the characters, and I can't find the complete version. It was available to buy online years ago, but now it's not. I managed to find the lead programmer, but either even he doesn't have a copy anymore or wasn't willing to share it with me for some reason. So what we have is less than half of the game, plus footage of the Moeka game uploaded to Nico Nico. I looked fucking everywhere for this, so if someone actually has the full C81 version, please let me know. The ones I have are the Suzuha game, where you have to steer Mr. Braun away from Okabe as he goes to the 42-inch CRT and does something, all the while collecting Nai tokens and making sure to avoid crashing him into the CRT walls. The Mayuri one, you collect chicken and bananas and avoid being hit by cans of Odin. But my favorite out of the three has to be the Ruka one, which is a simple pattern matching game where you follow Okabe's instructions with the Demon Sword Seminare. Not that any of these games are actually deep, but they're all fun little games with what is clearly a lot of love for each of the characters. So this was a fun distraction from what I can only describe as mountains and mountains of pornography. Maybe we'll revisit this one, but in the meantime, look forward to next week's episode where we talk about how Steinsgate taught me the meaning of life. As always, thank you so much for your time, friends, and I will see you in the next video.